It's often very important to integrate identification and quantitative information found in mass spectrometry data. This is why we've integrated a tool into Peaks that provides peptide feature intensity information for identified peptides. By doing this, you can get an idea of the relative quantity of a peptide in your sample. Here you can see a graphical representation of a full proteomic LCMS run. It's clear that there is a specific group of likely peptides represented by the high intensity peaks seen here. Peaks then answers the question of, what is the identity of those high intensity peptide signals? It does this using a concept already used in label-free quantification algorithms called peptide feature detection. A peptide found in the LCMS experiment will appear in a predictable way. It will have a visible and predictable isotopic distribution resulting from different carbon isotopes, and its intensity will follow gamma distribution across the retention time range in which it elutes. If the signal from the mass spec has these characteristics, we call it a peptide feature. Peaks will automatically detect these peptide features and calculate the area under their retention time curve. It will include the area of all isotopes associated with the feature within 5% relative intensity of the most intense peak. These areas are then integrated into the XIC curve shown here. From this, the area under the curve can be easily calculated. We then have to group these peptide features. If that feature is selected as a precursor ion for MSMS, and then that MSMS is identified, we can link the two together. This is how we're able to match peptide feature intensity with an identified peptide. Viewing this information in Peaks is very intuitive. Once you click on the Peptide tab, the associated peptide feature intensity is found in the area column. This can be sorted to see the peptides with the highest intensity signal. This information has proven to be very informative. For example, in the publication shown here, they reported the normalized area into the curve of peptide features associated with endogenous peptides. This gave the research group proof of the most abundant peptides eluded from their sample. We ran a subset of the data through peaks. What's great is that we're able to generate similar results with one click of a button. Sorting the peptide table by feature area gives you a clear idea of the most abundant peptides in the sample. If you'd like to validate the link between identified peptides and peptide features, it's quite easy to do. Right click on a peptide in the peptide table and select Show Spectrum in LCMS. It will bring you to the location in the LCMS heat map where the MSMS event occurred. This map gives you a top down view of the signal coming out of the mass spec in terms of M over Z, retention time, and intensity. Peptide features that are detected will be marked with a red circle. Scroll over the circle and a box will appear showing the detected range in which the peptide feature occurred. The area under the curve of the peptide feature will be displayed in the pop-up. This is the area we display in the peptide table. You can even get a more intuitive 3D view of the peptide feature by clicking on the 3D button in the top right hand corner of the pane. From this view, the peptide feature can be seen very clearly. I hope this has helped you become more familiar with peptide feature intensities and peaks. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to our channel to learn more about Peaks, complete software for proteomics.